Hello, my name is Samuel Peterson, and today I will be performing a selection from The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde, followed by a selection from Cat on a Hot Tin Roof by Tennessee Williams. I haven't the slightest intention of dining with Aunt Augusta. To begin with, I dined there on Monday, and once a week is quite enough to spend with one's own relations. In the second place, whenever I do dine there, I'm always treated as a member of the family and sent down with either no woman at all or two. And in the third place, I know exactly who Aunt Augusta will seat me next to tonight. She will seat me next to Mary Farquhar, who always flirts with her own husband across the dinner table. That is not very pleasant. Indeed, it is not even decent. And yet that sort of behavior is enormously on the increase. The amount of women who, fl who, who flirt with their own husbands is perfectly scandalous. It looks so bad. It is simply washing one's clean linen in public. I lay in a hospital bed and watched our games on TV. I saw Maggie on the bench next to Skipper when he got pulled out of a game for stumbles or fumbles. It burned me up the way she hung on his arm. You know, I think Maggie was always a little jealous of me and Skipper. Because she and I never got any closer than two people just get in bed. Which is not much closer than two cats on a fence humping. So she took this time to work on poor, dumb Skipper. He was less than an average student at Ole Miss. You know that, don't you? She poured into his head the dirty, false idea that what, what we had, him and me, was just some frustrated case of that old pair of sisters that used to live in this room, Jack Straw and Peter Ancello. And poor Skipper, he went to bed with her to prove it wasn't true. When that didn't work, he thought it was true. Skipper broke in two like a rotten stick. Never seen anyone turn so fast to a lush or die so quickly from it. Now are you satisfied? Standing in this room, well, I wonder what comes now. I know I have to help her, but hell if I know how. And all the times that I've been told the way her illness goes, the truth of it is no one really knows. And every day this act we act gets more and more absurd. And all my fears just sit inside me, screaming to be heard. I know they won't throw not a single word. I was here at her side when she called, when she cried. How could she leave me on my own? Will it work, this cure? There's no way to be sure. But I'm weary to the bone, and whenever she goes flying, I keep my feet right on the ground.